It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Today I'm gonna talk about some news in regards to Kaiju and Tokusatsu. Obviously this guy over here is very much excited to hear about this news. And so, without further hesitation, let's talk about the news in Tokusatsu and Kaiju that I found to be the most interesting this week. The first bit of news, of course, has to be the fact that uh, the Power Rangers series is being removed off of Netflix, according to people in Brazil and also other parts of the world, that Netflix no longer has the right to the series because of copyright reasons. Now, of course, many people I saw on the internet are very much concerned about this, mostly because, of course, I guess they have Netflix accounts, and so they kind of depend on watching the show on Netflix, to which I say that, of course, like, it's not really hard to find Power Rangers, because Power Rangers is pretty much everywhere. There's, like, a bunch of DVDs that are being, of course, released by Shell Factory every single time. Of course, on Shell Factory's site, they have the original Super Sentai stuff for everybody to see in Japanese with subtitles. And so, they have, like, the DVDs, they have, like, the Super Sentai, so Power Rangers is not going away anytime soon. That said, of course, like, I'm really glad that it might not be on Netflix in a personal way. Because, as we all know, that whole entire controversy with cuties is too much. And so I'm pretty sure no company would want to be like associated with a company that is known for defending a movie like Cuties on their platform. And so naturally, I have no of course, qual against any companies wanting to remove something that is known for having Cuties on their service and having people defend that kind of filth on their service. So in a weird sense of way, I'm actually glad that it's being released, like, you know, not being released on Netflix anymore. The, ne the next bit of news, of course, has to be, of course, this whole entire announcement for Godzilla. Now, of course, one aspect that I really like about the Godzilla movies is obviously the music. Now, people talk about the special effects, they talk about the humans, they talk about any other aspect but the music. To me, the Godzilla music from Akira Fukubei, I can't even pronounce this guy's name right now, sorry. Akira Fukubei does much better, guys. Way better, I'm pretty sure. But when I think about the Godzilla movies, I think about that music from Akira Fukubei. It's the same thing with 007. When I think about 007, I think about the music that is done by John Barry, right? And so the two kind of stuff are not inseparable. And so, when I first heard the announcement that they're going to have some sort of new collection of records that's going to be for the soundtrack of the original Godzilla movies, I was really excited to hear about that news. Apparently, it has like at least 17, and counting 17 different records for all of the freaking Godzilla movies. Now, obviously, like, uh, records, they've been around for, like, a really long time. They've been around since, like, my mom was born, been around since my grandma was, like, born. And so, it seems as though that there has been some sort of peak interest in releasing stuff on records yet again. And personally, I have no problems, because sometimes what is old is new. Now, there's some debates among people whether or not, like, records are better than CDs or digital or vice versa. Personally, I don't care about that, but to me, to see like a record collection of all the original Godzilla movies sounds fantastic. And also, what I'm really find curious about this whole entire record collection is the fact that I personally think that the artwork looks better, to me at least, in comparison to the Criterion set. Like, I think the Gamera set from like Aero Video looks better than the Criterion set. I think that this whole entire record collection of the Godzilla soundtrack looks better than, of course, the Criterion collection. So to me at least, I honestly think that they had like a better person, a better artist that did the illustrations for the films. Now, the price is like really, really expensive when I seen. Like, I'm not really an expert when prices when it comes down to records, but they're actually asking for like $450. And not only that, but they also plan on shipping entirely in the United States only. 
Now, personally, I think that they should ship the whole entire set worldwide. You'd probably get more money that way if you ship the whole entire set in other countries outside of the United States. And number two, $150 is like a lot of money. And so that means I have to save like a lot of money actually to, you know, buy that set. But once I save up that money, you bet your ass gonna review that set because I'm a huge Godzilla fan. So I had to review that set. I had to buy that set. So I cannot wait to actually see it come out in March. Now this bit of news is pretty much fantastic for those who are a fan of Kamen Rider. Happy New Year 2021. Million thanks to millions of our Tokusatsu fans around the world. The subscribers of Tori Tokusatsu World Official had exceeded 143,000 since its launch on April the 6th, 2016, as of December 23rd, and is still growing rapidly. We are proud to announce that Tok Tori Tokusatsu World Official will be releasing selected episode from all of the Common Writer, aka Mass Writer series, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the origin since 1971 together with the fans from around the world. The uploads of the program will start from January 16, 2021, along with the various events related to the anniversaries. Enjoy the episodes and celebrate Common Writer's 50th anniversary together on any device, any time, and any day. Hence, Shin. This is humongous news if you're a fan of Common Rider, because many shows for Common Rider were like really super hard to find prior to this announcement. Of course, we know for a fact that Shout Factory had licensed some shows for Common Rider during last year in 2020. And of course, there was like some movies, I believe, that was on Tori's uh, channel that actually was shown during that time period when it was first announced. And so, it's really, really cool that Tori Studios is actually going to release all the episodes of Common Rider on their platform to actually have people watch across the globe. And that, to me, is fantastic. It's really fantastic because it seems as though that the response to every single time there was a Kamen Rider show or movie being played on YouTube, illegally by the way, there was like a large, large, large group of people that supported it. And so naturally, I'm kind of curious to see all the shows. I only saw the first Kamen Rider. I also saw Kamen Rider V3 on DVD. And I also saw some episodes of Cougar. And so I honestly cannot wait to see the other episodes because personally I find at least the first Kamen Rider to be really fun to watch. It's because it's super super dark, you know. It has like this sort of macaw feel when I watch the first Kamen Rider. And so naturally I'm kind of curious about the different Kamen Riders. So what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below and of course I'll see you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I won't <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.